You can almost taste it, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today, man. I, hope, blah, I really do hope that. That's what I'm trying to say. And welcome to today's video where I'm talking about what Chelsea might look like in the resumption of football. This video was inspired by Chelsea's 7-1 demolition job against Queen's Park Rangers behind closed doors in a what seemingly is a sort of pre-season friendly or a pre-resumption friendly, I guess you could call it. Some exciting names on the score sheet and some big players getting back into action. And with that, with Chelsea thinking of getting revitalised, getting ready for the Aston Villa game, I wanted to speculate for a bit of fun, a general predicted lineup not for the Villa game. This is not a match preview, which I probably will do. This is a sort of football resumption speculation preview. I'm going to talk about the 7-1 win, the goal scorers, and then I'm going to talk about who I think would probably be likely to feature when football starts back on. Not necessarily just for the Villa game, but just for me thinking who's going to be important players for Chelsea. And if you enjoy daily content regarding Chelsea Football Club, I'd urge you all to subscribe to Football Therapy only if you want to, man. But if you choose to do so, please do hit that bell notifications icon because it is important, man. It really is. And if you want to support me, please drop a like on this video. All right, let's get into it. I don't know if I've got more of a fat neck, but this needs to get unbuttoned. Right, so shortly after beating Reading 1-0, which is a sort of like okay win, I suppose, I was kind of gagging for Chelsea to really hit a team for a lot of goals. And they did that behind closed doors against QPR, winning 7-1. Lovely scenes indeed. The goal scorers for Chelsea Football Club were Mason Mount, Olivier Giroud, Ooh, Willian, and here's the interesting part, two for Ruben Loftus-Cheek, which we love to see, and two for Billy Gilmore, that's right, deep playing defensive midfielder, playmaker, metronomic, regista style of Billy Gilmore, we know he can play further up the pitch and he scored goals for the youth team for Chelsea, but he bagged a brace against QPR, that is incredible and lovely scenes. So it's nice just to see these players, these young, exciting players feature who seemingly are really, really important for Chelsea moving forward. And it's nice to see Chelsea bagging goals against opposition. Granted, lower league opposition in this, what I'm just going to call pre-season friendly. But you know, Man United are out here losing to West Brom, which is similar level. Arsenal losing to Brentford. I know they're a very good team for that level, but still, Chelsea coming up against champ level opposition and they are just smashing them for seven goals and only conceding one. So I'm going to pull up the analysis screen now and talk about a potential speculated lineup for the resumption of the football. Whoosh, here we go, this old thing. Now, in goal, Kepa Rita Balaga. He's kind of seemingly won back Frank Lampard, certainly when he was brought back in after his timeout when Willy Caballero benched him. Or rather, he benched himself and Caballero came in. Kepa played, of course, against Liverpool and Everton in the 2 and 4 nil wins, respectively, and generally had a pretty good game. So I think for the moment, even if Frank Lampard has reservations for the Spanish goalkeeper, I think Kepa keeps his spot in goal, and yeah, Kepa's in goal. Kind of sounded like I was about to say something else there, but really I'm just saying Kepa's in goal. Let's go right back. This is one of the easiest ones. I'm going to go with Rhys James. Recently signed a new deal, absolute superstar in the making. No one really can challenge him. If Frank Lampard wants to play the football he intends to play, he needs Rhys James starting at right back. No problems there. Now, for the centre-back partnership, it's a little bit difficult for me. I'm going to say Antonio Rudiger, because although he's been in and out of the team and often was injured this season, I do think Frank Lampard recognises him as one of his best centre-halves. Now, if I was going to choose two myself. To be honest, I'd have a nightmare choosing two because I've made a case for every single centre-half. I really like Tomori and Christensen for what they can offer technically and for speed, but to be honest, I think it's going to be Antonio Rudiger as one centre-half and purely because I can't really think too much. I'm, I'm going to say Kurt Zuma. 
I'm going to say Kurt Zuma is going to partner him in the back. This is a very difficult one. I guess you probably heard me alluding to how highly I rate Christensen and Tomori. But I think for the start of football, I think experience in the Premier League is going to pull rank. I know Rudiger hasn't got that much experience in the Premier League, maybe compared to Christensen. Zuma has a lot, but um, Rudiger has a lot of experience generally. So I think those two will be the centre-back partnership, certainly at the beginning. Now, left back is a difficult one. Is it going to be Azpilicueta? who was offering a bit more defensive assurances to Frank Lampard or is it going to be Emerson or Alonso? Emerson looked like he was bottom of the pecking order. He did feature against QPR so perhaps he'll get a run out. I mean he's the conventional left back or the most suited for a conventional left back but for me because he offers goals because Frank Lampard was trusting him before football stopped I'm going to say Marcus Alonso starts at left back. It's a big shout. He has loads of defensive frailties. But to be honest, if Chelsea are defending as a team and they need goals from everywhere, Marcus Alonso for the moment probably gets the nod from Frank Lampard's perspective. Now, this does divide opinion at the bottom of the midfield three. People were saying Jorginho because he's the vice captain. He's done so well for Frank Lampard. And like in this lineup, if Cesar Azpilicueta is not starting, the club captain... Who is going to, you know, you need Jorginho for that sort of senior vice captain vibe on the pitch. But no, he scored two goals today against QPR. He was man of the match Chelsea's last two matches. You simply cannot leave out Billy Gilmore. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is just how I feel personally. I've got to start him at the base of the midfield. And that's just how it's got to be. So what next? Well, I don't think... <laughs> this is so difficult, man. This is so difficult. <laughs> because now I've got two midfield spots. And I've got Mason Mount, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, N'Golo Kante, and Mateo Kovacic. They literally all should be starting. I'm such a Ruben Loftus-Cheek mega fan. I'm actually going to put him in left centre mid. And I'm going to put him in over Mason Mount, who's been playing really, really well, kind of, before football stopped. He looked like he was playing really well again. He's so important to how Frank Lampard plays Mason Mount in terms of his pressing. R huge player for Frank. But for me, if Ruben's scoring multiple goals out here and he looks fit and raring to go again, the kind of player Ruben Loftus-Cheek is... I'm going to put him in left centre mid. And remember, this isn't an Aston Villa preview. He might not start for Aston Villa. It might be Mason Mount. But this is a general vibe for the resumption of the whole season. So Ruben Loftus-Cheek is going to go left centre mid on the left side of Billy Gilmore. And for me, the right-sided central midfielder is between N'Golo Kante and Mateo Kovacic. Obviously both top, top tier players. But for me, N'Golo Kante has been in and out. He hasn't been training with the team that long because of his uh, fears of the virus, understandably. And because Mateo Kovacic is probably Chelsea's player of the season, he completes my midfield three and I have him on the right-hand side. Right, the front three, this is going to be an interesting one. Up front, it's going to be relatively easy, isn't it? Or is it actually? Hold on. <laughs> I was going to say Tammy Abraham, fit, raring to go. To be honest, yeah, I was going to say Giroud deserves a massive shout for how well he played before football paused, and that is absolutely true. But Tammy Abraham will demand probably the majority of these games to prove himself to Frank Lampard that he will still be the number nine when Timo Werner arrives, and Timo Werner will have to be pushed that wide, and Tammy will keep his spot up front. So I think Tammy Abraham will start in the striker position, fully fit, no longer carrying an injury, and be eager to go, hopefully. Right, so we've all heard the good news about Callum Hudson-Odoi. His name has been cleared, but he carried a niggling injury recently, so I don't think he'll be starting. Uh, he'll have to play his way back into the team and play his way back into fitness again. Uh, so I think the general starting lineup with the first few games, I think it's going to be Willian on the right wing. Willian's fully fit, and although he's in the dying embers of his Chelsea career, he is an industrious player, and Frank Lampard really looks to him when he needs someone to basically set the example in terms of work rate on the pitch. I think Willian will start on the right of Tammy Abraham. He scored, obviously, today as well in the friendly. And I feel like he'll just be one of the ones good to go that Frank Lampard trusts. Now, it gets a little bit difficult here. For the left wing, I'm torn between Christian Pulisic and Pedro. Now, 
Pedro scored against Reading, and again, he's that sort of senior industrious player that Frank Lampard might count on. But to be honest, in terms of young dynamism and skills, I have a feeling Frank Lampard will turn straight back to Christian Pulisic. So I'm going to choose Christian to complete my front three. And yeah, I think a front three of Tammy Abraham, Willian and Christian Pulisic is a nice blend of different attributes, skill sets and industry. Granted, Pedro, I mean, even if it's not the first game Pulisic starts in, he might start, to be honest, he might start a front three of Giroud, Pedro and Willian against Villa just for the sort of seniority and experience. But a couple of games in, I see Pulisic has to come back in. I think Willian will keep his place and Tammy Abraham. So that completes my front three. So it's a mix of seniority, I guess, and youth. I mean, there's not much seniority there, is there? There's Willian... There's Rudiger, I suppose. I suppose Alonso's kind of a senior player now, but not really that much. Still, that team for me has to be able to secure top four, in my humble opinion. All right, that's enough of this analysis screen. Let's get rid of it and wind down the video. The truth is, Chelsea have a massive, exciting squad, even before new arrivals Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner. Granted, they're missing star quality to really challenge the top echelons of the Premier League, and that's why the likes of Timo Werner Vernon and Hakim Ziyech are arriving in the summer to bolster Chelsea's front line and score more goals. But in terms of what's there, with the injured players coming back and the players that were sort of carrying slight injuries but still playing, with everyone fully recovered, Chelsea have a very, very strong player arsenal indeed, and I think they've got enough to secure that top four, maybe even steal a third spot. But I'm really keen to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on this line up what you think do you what changes would you make perhaps leave your lineups in the comment section below and i'll be down there reading them talking to you guys and if you've enjoyed this content i've brought for you today please do like this video that means a lot remember to subscribe if you're new to this channel and you can follow me on social media at football yannick all right you know what? that's it for me i can't talk anymore enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby